Hello guys, welcome to Straightforward Farming. Today's episode is gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to. This is gonna be my rig for the day, Case IH, can you believe it? <laughs> now, a uh, good friend of mine farms down here southwest of Sturtson, Illinois. Uh, he's got all Case IH equipment. Um, me and Mike go way back, years and years and years, used to help him farm a lot when I was a lot younger. And uh, had a Saturday here. I don't have much going on. Our crops ain't quite ready yet. He's cutting some beans, so I come down to get a glimpse of his operation, show you guys some Case IH equipment, and help him out a little bit. Well, we're gonna be running a 9330 Case IH tractor today. Pulling a J&M 1010 cart, which is basically a thousand bushel cart. Pretty good looking outfit here. Uh, this is Mike's planting tractor. He pulls a 16 row Kinsey with this tractor. Um, over there in the field, you can't quite see it from here. Uh, Mike's nephew Andy is running a 7088 Case IH combine with a 30 foot auger head on it. So we'll get started here. See if I know how to run Case IH equipment or not. You'll probably never see this on camera, but I'm gonna show you here. When you get in Mike's stuff, it is super duper nice. It's all armor old, the floors are carpeted, nothing's beat up, tore up, nothing like that. He takes good care of stuff. So I'll show you. Look at that. If I had a white glove, I'd give it the white glove test. He's always been that way. And I like to see that when people do that. They take good care of stuff, carpeting on the floor. So yeah. One thing about old Mike's stuff, it may not be the newest, but odds are it will be the nicest. He takes good care of stuff. So I think we'll saunder over here by the combine, get some footage of that, see if I know how to run this rig. And hopefully it'll tear nothing up or scratch it because he'll kill me. We got a combine calling her name, boys. Let's go check it out. This old tractor is pretty easy to drive, really. You just push your clutch in. You want to put it in a forward gear. You go up like that. You want to put it in reverse. You go like that. But once you get it in either forward or reverse, then you use this gear shift. And if you want to bump it up a gear, you just keep bumping her forward. If you want to slow her down, you just keep backing her down. Up here. Those are your miles per hour, your gear, RPMs on the dash there. Gauges all down the side over here. Can't hardly see them. I'll have to ask Mike when he gets back. Uh, this is a 9330 Case IH. Um, I don't know if this would be like a late 90s, early 2000s. I'm not exactly sure when these were made. Um, shoot, it's been 15, 16 years ago. I ran a Case IH 9370 one spring, put an anhydrous on, put a couple thousand acres on it. Um, it had a different transmission. I think it had like A, B, C, and D, and then one, two, three, and four, or something like that. It didn't have any kind of a power shift in it, but uh, it was a good tractor. So uh, it would be somewhat similar to one of these as far as when it was made. So. Yeah, this uh, ain't a bad little rig here. I kind of like it.
we get done in time this evening here, I'll go give you a grand tour of all of Mike's machinery. Uh, he's got a 1466 International that's just cherry. I mean, it is a beautiful tractor. Mike's dad bought it new in 72, 3, whatever year it is. But uh, he's had it all repainted and fixed up, and man, it's a beautiful tractor. Got uh, right around 4,000 original hours on it. And uh, I'll never forget it. It was, oh gosh, 15 years ago, maybe longer, probably longer than that even, probably closer to 20, when he got that tractor repainted. There was a guy over east of here. He's not in business anymore, but he run a body shop. And so uh, he was kind of known for, you know, being a real good painter. So we took the hoods and the fenders over there to him to have them painted. And I'll never forget when we went to pick them hoods up, uh, we got there and he said, yeah, come on out here. He said, they're out here in the shed. And we went out there and it was one of them big old fashioned gambrel roof barns, you know, like you've seen a hundred years ago with hay and straw and dirt and manure a foot deep in it. And those hoods and fenders were hanging in there to dry. And when he said, come out to the barn and get them, we all took off walking and we all kind of looked at each other like, you gotta be shitting me. I mean, uh, you know, this is not gonna be good. And he slid that barn door open and we were in utter disbelief. It was one of the most beautiful paint jobs I have ever seen in my life. So it, it really looks sharp. Uh, kept it all original colors, you know, didn't do anything fancy on it or whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. And then uh, he's got an old uh, 1600 Oliver diesel. It's all fixed up. It's a nice tractor. Uh, he's got another Case IH four-wheel drive like this. I don't remember the size on it. We'll have to look when we get to the shed. It's like a 9370, 9380, somewhere in there, I think. And then he's got a Case IH 71, 20, 30, 40, something like that, two-wheel drive. So hopefully if we get done in time, we'll go give you the grand tour. He's got He's got some pretty nice stuff.
So I'll show you guys the row width in soybeans here. There's two different row, row widths that guys plant around here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So these beans are in 30 inch rows. That's the same row width that we would plant corn around here. Now, not everybody. There's a few stragglers out there that plant their crops in different row widths in this area, but the vast majority of the corn is planted in 30 inch rows, which is the same as what these beans are. Okay, now these beans here, these are in 15 inch rows. See how close them are together? So the beans we just looked at was in 30 inch rows, so that would be a row there, this row was gone, and then that row was there. So now we're in 15, so we split that 30 in half. Now, around here, about the only people planting beans in 30 inch rows are guys that got 24 row corn planters, 60 foot wide, basically. Once you get much over 40 foot, you just can't do the 15 inch game unless you plant it twice. You could plant it once in 30 inch rows, then you could go back over the field again and split your rows and put them in 15s. But most guys don't do that because there ain't hardly a nickel's worth of difference in yield on a 15 inch row bean versus a 30. Some years the 30 beat the 15s, some years the 15s beat the 30s. So it's just not worth the extra trip over the field to split them rows again. Well, we got that field all done. So we're gonna head her home for the evening. Uh, we could hold a few more beans, but elevator is closing right now and they're not open tomorrow. So uh, we're just gonna stop there and pick her up again Monday, I guess. Well, here we got a Case IH 7130 two-wheel drive. It's on the bat wing. Mike's gone to the elevator, so I'm not able to ask him much about anything here. So, if I remember right, he does all of his own spraying, so this is his spraying tractor slash mowing, all that good stuff. little gale skid loader set in here. Here is his 1600 Oliver diesel. Narrow front. That's a neat little tractor there. Uh, I drove that in a uh, local tractor drive last year on Labor Day. Good little rig there. I'm not sure what year that is, but um, I'm not sure if his mom and dad bought that tractor new or not, but I know it's been on this farm for years so if they didn't buy it new it was fairly new when they bought it that's more or less an auger tractor now just extreme light duty it just doesn't get used for much anymore maybe to back a grain table in the corner of the shed or something like that but other than that she just doesn't get used much here we got a kinsey 3600 1631 planter, I think. Uh, he pulls this with that 9330 that's on the grain cart. Uh, them Kinsey's are good planters. Um, if I did not have a deer planter, Kinsey would be my next pick, I think. Um, and I don't know, we just have always run deer planters and that's what we've always stuck with. So I have no problem with a Kinsey at all. They're good planters. Here we got a super MTA and this looks to be more of a project slash jacking around tractor. Um, he just bought this, oh it's been within the last few years from a, a neighbor down here had a sale and he bought it on the sale. So yep it just kind of sits in the corner here. Here's a little cub. Don't know anything about this. Didn't even know he had it. Cute little rig there. I got another one of his grain trucks here. This is an 06, 07, roughly Freightliner. Hopper bottom on it. Nice looking truck there. Like I say, I wish he was here to give me some more info on all this stuff, but we'll make do. Next up, Case IH 3408 Cornhead. Goes on the 7088. Yeah. 
So here she is. This is the old 1466. Mike's dad bought this tractor new, and like I say, it was in, you know, 70, 1, 2, 3, whatever year this tractor is. But uh, I've spent several hours on this tractor when I was younger. Um, she's a good tractor, uh, right around 4,000 original hours on it. Um, but yeah, the paint job on this tractor, the camera will never do it justice, but I mean, it's just one of the most beautiful paint jobs I've ever seen on a tractor, ever. It really turned out nice. So yep, there she sets. Got a pull type red ball sprayer set in here. Sprays all his own crops with that. Uh, like I say, he pulls that with that uh, Magnum tractor we looked at a little bit ago. So I do have some bad news. Uh, Mike's 93, I think it's a 9380. It's not here at the farm right now. It's actually in town getting worked on. And no, not because it's a Case IH. It's because it's got a small oil leak on it and he's very particular and he wants it fixed and so it's going to get fixed. So that's just the way he rolls. So uh, yeah, basically it looks just like that tractor that was on the grain cart, but it's a little bit bigger. It's got bigger tires on it, you know, a lot more horse. So yeah, that's his line of machinery. Uh, like I say, I apologize. It's kind of vague. Um, you know, them guys are busy harvesting. I'm not going to go pinning people down in the corner of the field and try to get a full blown interview here and talk about their machinery. You know, they're under the gun here. So, uh, I just kind of wanted to show everybody what he had, show you some red equipment. Uh, me and Mike go way back, uh, been good friends for, gosh, long as I can remember. So, uh, yeah, so that's his operation. Uh, he's uh, Sturzen, Illinois, which is basically the same town that I'm from. We just live a few miles apart. Hopefully in a couple weeks, we can come back down to Mike's once the corn harvest gets rolling hot and heavy, and we can show you how he dries corn compared to how we do it. Uh, a lot of guys have different setups. Uh, we run all of our stuff through a shiver system, which I'll just have to show you that on a video versus trying to explain it. Uh, Mike spins uh, have stirrators in them, so that's a totally different setup from the way we do it. It's the same concept. You're still looking to just dry corn, but it just works totally different than from what we do. So I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Uh, hopefully we can get him on camera next time. Uh, maybe he can tell you some of the things that he likes and doesn't like around there and things that he'd like to change and, and uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about his operation. So I hope you guys understand, you know, being vague today. I just I just didn't want to bother them guys. I always hate getting in the way like that. So, uh, you know, we just kind of winged it, but uh, I think it'll turn out all right. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next week. And hopefully we will be starting on corn harvest and get some things rolling. Thanks for watching, guys.